Hi, I'm Chetna Makan here from my kitchen in Broadstairs, a small seaside town. And because we've been spending so much time at home, it's so nice to be able to go out for a walk with the kids, get some fresh sea air and come back to a warm bowl of this comforting chickpea spinach curry. It's quite a simple curry using the store cupboard ingredients, which makes it quite handy at the moment. Also, it's vegan, which is brilliant. Um, so let's get cooking. I'm going to start by preparing the onion. So all you've got to do is finely chop it, which in my world is roughly short because, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not the greatest chopper. And for the full recipe, you can find the link below. And we also use some garlic. I am using a couple of cloves here, but that shouldn't stop you from using more if you want to. There's no such thing as too much garlic, to be honest. You can chop up the garlic, or if you find it easier, you can even grate it. And of course, you've got to use a bit of heat. So use a chili of your choice. This one is a medium spicy one, uh, which is great. But if you want it really hot, you can use the smaller ones, bird's eye one, but it's totally up to you. I'm just going to use half because it kind of smells a bit spicy. It's quite important that you follow a recipe, but at the same time, you have to use your senses to um, judge whether it's enough chili for you, it's enough garlic for you, depending on your taste. And that's it, our prep's done and we'll move on to the hob. A nice deep pan, uh, and then gonna start with some sunflower oil, some cumin seeds, and just let them sizzle a little bit. That's when they release their flavor, which is quite important. Then we add the garlic and chili. That's just lovely. You don't want too long, but you can smell the garlic and the chili. And then goes in our onions. Through all of this, keep the heat on medium. And once it's all nicely sizzling away, that's when we we'll reduce the heat a little bit and cook this until they are golden. Now, it might take you anything between eight to 10 minutes. The onions are looking so, so beautiful and a deep golden color. And it makes me a bit sad when people are spending so much time making a curry, but they just don't get the color of the onions golden enough. And I promise you, those extra five minutes are going to add so much more flavor uh, to the final dish. So this is looking lovely and everything is looking nice and golden and in goes our chopped tomatoes. So a whole tin. Once again, the key is to let it cook, let it all come together nicely. And that is going to happen once we cover this and leave it to cook on medium to low heat for 10 minutes. Oh my God, that smells so good already. And I haven't even added the paste yet. So that is uh, really nice. You can see the tomatoes have kind of softened up even more and cooked nicely with the onions. So we're going to add uh, some salt and the tikka masala paste. Now these pastes are really handy to have because you can cut out all the spices and all you need is the paste which is full of flavor. Next, I'm going to use the tin chickpeas and all you have to do is drain and rinse them, which I have done with two tins here and that can go straight in. And also a tin of coconut milk. Now, if you want, you can add the light coconut milk, but I prefer to use the full fat. And all that's left to do is mix it up really well get it on high heat so that it comes to a boil. And you might ask that the chickpeas are cooked, so why do we need to cook it more? Uh, well, it's really important for all the flavors to come together and then the chickpea also softens up slightly bit more, which again is going to make it even more delicious. This has come to a boil, which is quite important. Then I'm going to cover and let this cook on low to medium heat. I don't want it too low because I really want a bit of heat going. 
for around 30 minutes, which gives me just enough time for a cup of tea. So it's been 30 minutes and just look at that. Now to finish this, I'm going to add a couple of things, a little bit of sugar. If you want, you can add agave syrup or maple syrup. And the reason being, it just needs a little bit of sweetness to balance the flavors and also some fresh spinach leaves. And this is a washed, ready to use bag of spinach. You can add it as it is, but I like to chop it up. Now this whole lot goes into the curry and it will only take a couple of minutes. So a good mix and then the lid goes back on for two minutes. The dish is ready. It's freezing outside, but the sun's just come out. Perfect timing. Here is our chickpea and spinach vegan curry. Oh, this is wonderful. It just smells so amazing. I'm going to plate it up, warm some naans and then serve it. You can also serve it with some nice steaming hot rice, um, slice of sourdough or, you know, um, chapati, whatever you like. Absolutely beautiful with any sides. And here it is, uh, the chickpea spinach curry. And I do hope that you will try it and enjoy it.